Hi, my name is Dave and this is NTI Online. Today we're going to go over cleaning an FTVN 110 boiler. The process I'm going to follow is going to be the same whether you have the smaller 110 or the 199. The heat exchanger is just going to get bigger. Now to do a proper service on these boilers you're going to require a combustion analyzer, uh, a manometer, you need a source of water, preferably a hose but a spray bottle will work as well. Oftentimes you're going to need a scrub brush of some kind, so I've got a plastic bristle scrub brush. It's a good idea to have some rags or paper towel on hand because you are going to be getting a little bit wet potentially. As for tools that are required, you want a Torx T4 heat screwdriver for adjusting the low fire on the gas valve, a Torx T20 for removing the flame rod and igniter, a flat bladed screwdriver is a very handy thing to have. Any of the boilers that have this orange gasket will tend to get glued down over time so they can be difficult to remove and sometimes you need to get in there and pry them. A 10 millimeter socket or wrench for removing the burner door studs. A Phillips number two, this will be for removing and inspecting the Venturi. And lastly, a good pair of adjustable pliers or an adjustable wrench for disconnecting your gas line. To get started, we're going to power down the unit by unplugging it from the wall. Once your unit is powered down, make sure the gas is shut off. And the next thing we're going to do is start disassembling the heat exchanger. This little plastic clip will come off, then you can remove the muffler assembly. It's always a good idea to inspect inside here and see how much dust and debris has built up. If there's significant debris, it's important that you inspect the location of the intake to make sure there are no problems. Next, we're going to remove the gas line and get this out of our way. So we're going to take this side off, set the gasket to one side, you can reuse that, and then you're going to loosen this other connection just a little bit. You don't have to fully remove it, we just want to get that line out of our way. Now that we've got access to the fan, we're going to remove all of the wires to our thermal door switch, flame rod, the igniter, including the ground wire, and then the two wires connected to our combustion fan motor. Once all these are pushed to one side, we're going to remove the flame rod and igniter. On any fire tube boiler, it's important that you take these out before you take the door off. If you don't do that, you can damage the refractory inside the chamber. Most of the time when you remove these, the gaskets are going to be in decent shape and they're probably going to stick to the igniter in most cases. However, it's a good idea to have spares available because sometimes they will tear. Uh, as long as they don't tear and they're in good shape, you can reuse them. You want to have a look at the spacing on the igniter and flame rod and you're looking for warping if they warp left or right or if they trend outwards this way. You may need to replace those parts. If they look in good condition, generally speaking, I would not touch them unless you have a problem. There's our igniter. On newer models, you'll find that the ceramic portion of these igniters is longer, and that's done to separate the ignition port part from the refractory inside. So yours may look slightly different, but it should look something like this, and this one is in good condition. When you're working on any fire tube boiler, have a look. If there's an inspection hatch at the top of the boiler, it means that the blower must be removed before doing the service. If there is no hatch like this one, it means that the combustion blower and the door comes off as one piece. Now that we have the burner door nuts off, you want to try and remove this door. Now this one's going to come off easily. However, in some cases, you may need to stick a flat screwdriver in there and just twist or pry to get the door started. Once you break the seal, this will usually come off quite easily. And what's generally best is with these ones, try and remove the gasket with the door. It just means that uh, everything's going to come apart a little bit better and you're less likely to have any damage to anything.
once you get this apart, you're going to inspect the burner to make sure that there's nothing that looks wrong here in terms of holes or tears in this outer metal mesh. You want to inspect the refractory. If it has the ceramic cloth like this one does, you want to make sure that this is not torn or impinging on the igniter or flame rod. I always like to reach in and just gently push the white ceramic back away from the flame rod and igniter. You want a little bit of separation there because if this is impinging on the igniter or flame rod, it can cause problems with ignition or flame signal. Also look at this stitching. The stitching is metal and that's what holds it together. If it starts to fray and touches these parts, again, it could cause a problem for you. This one looks to be in good condition, so we can set it to one side. Now that you have access to the combustion chamber, you're going to want to take a significant amount of water. So something as simple as just an old water bottle will work. However, if you have a spray hose, that'll work better. You're going to flush water down through here and you're gonna keep flushing and scrubbing as needed until all the water coming out the bottom of the boiler runs clean and clear. Once you're content that you've got this chamber clean, the best practice, and this is not required, but it is a good practice, would be to take something like white household vinegar or a stainless steel cleaner. You're going to spray in down through the chamber, soak this thoroughly, leave it to sit for five or 10 minutes, rinse it with water one more time, and then you can reassemble the boiler. Now that you have the chamber clean, you're gonna to wanna to go down underneath the boiler. And newer boilers have a metal bracket over top of the condensate drain. That's done to protect this in shipping. You can remove this bracket once the boiler is in service. And what you're gonna do is disassemble the trap and wash out any debris that might be stuck inside the condensate drain. When you remove this, you're always gonna get a little bit of water come out. So it's a good idea to be prepared with some sort of bucket or rag, and you're gonna hold that under there and catch any water that comes out. Reassemble the trap, ensuring that all the parts are clean and that the little ball that's inside is clean and in the trap when you reassemble it. And now it's time to reassemble your boiler. If you've separated the refractory from the door, I would reassemble it at this point in time. These will only line up one way and the door studs are offset so that this door can only fit in one direction. Generally speaking, it's easiest just to line this up first and then set the whole assembly together. It's very important that you don't stick the refractory in and then push the burner down through. That can create an air gap under the refractory, which can lead to ignition problems later on. It's best with any of these burner door nuts to hand tighten everything first and then go back with a wrench. And it's always a good idea to tighten these down in a crisscross pattern. So you're going to tighten this one and then the opposite and the opposite and the opposite. That relieves any unnecessary stress on these studs. So we're going to start with the one in the front here. The torque spec on these is about five pound feet. Uh, I don't expect you to have a torque wrench, but just remember you're not going to over tighten them. good idea to go back and just double check each one to make sure that the torque is even and that you've tightened everything. Okay, now that we've done that, we can reinstall our igniter and flame rod. With your igniter and flame rod, always leave the first screw loose and then tighten them both down after you've got them both threaded in just a little. That avoids the potential of 
getting cross-threaded screws or damaging the ignite or flame rod. Now that everything's reconnected, a good step on most of these boilers, especially if they're on propane, would be to take off the Venturi and just inspect this carefully. Make sure this gasket is in good condition. It should be rubbery and relatively soft. Look for anything that's in the impeller, such as leaves or excessive buildup of perhaps bugs or just dust and debris in general. Make sure that these Venturis, they have flappers in them. The flappers need to operate completely free with no hesitation. If it's plugged up or dirty, you may need to clean this. Generally speaking, they will stay clean for quite a long time and don't require much service, but it's always a good idea to inspect. Another thing you want to do is remove these two screws on the front, hold the venturi like this, and pop this out. Once you have it out, inspect these orifices. Look for any heavy debris or buildup that might be inside there. If they are dirty, your best bet is to probably replace this. However, you can gently clean them. The goal is not to enlarge the hole, just to keep it the same and make sure it's clean. If you see a large amount of debris or buildup in here, it may indicate that you're either recycling a bit of flue gas or potentially that the fuel in your area is just a bit more corrosive and it's something to keep an eye on. When you reassemble this, it will only line up one way and when it's installed correctly, the little arrow will point straight up and the flappers will lay closed. So we'll push that back together, reinstall the two screws and then reattach the Venturi to the boiler. The combustion fan motor is just made out of aluminum, so just be gentle when you're putting the screws in. They don't go in easily. Just make sure that you're not getting a cross-threaded screw. Now reconnect our gas line. Get your gasket lined up and then snug down the two brass nuts. Now that our boiler's reassembled, take this plastic clip and the trick to this is there's a little lip on it. Make sure this sits in behind the screw. Sometimes it likes to ride up on top of them which makes putting the little locking clamp on very difficult. Once you get that lined up well, shove your intake muffler back on and the little locking clip will reinstall quite easily as long as you get that clip seated correctly. Now that your boiler's clean, you're going to Turn it back on and you're going to perform a combustion test. On your gas valve, you're going to check your incoming gas pressure by removing this little yellow test port and in the bottom center there's a tapping to connect your manometer to. That requires a Torx T15 screwdriver. You're going to loosen that test board up, put your manometer on, verify that your gas pressure is adequate. Once the boiler is fired up and running, you're going to remove the test port from the exhaust. And insert your analyzer and perform a high and a low fire combustion test. And most importantly, before you leave the job, have a look inside the boiler, look at the trap in the bottom, Make sure the little ball that's in the trap is floating before you leave the job site. Sometimes when they're a little bit older and they get sticky, they will get stuck in place and they can clog the condensate drain. 
So you want to make sure you see that floating before you leave. We'll have a separate video on doing a combustion setup and you can watch that video over here. And thank you for attending the cleaning on the TFTN today. If you have any questions, as always, please call our tech support department 1-800-688-2575.